Hey folks, so I'm back. I gotta make a uh, quick change on this PSP here. Um, looks like I neglected to do something during my initial install yesterday. Ooh, let's focus on the PSP instead. Um, so a few of you pointed this out and I did realize I had to do this. I just completely forgot during the actual install. Um, seeing as how I looked at the instructions like two months ago, because this stuff did not get to me very quickly, but uh, there is a point on the, <clears throat> there is a point on the PCB that has to be soldered. So even though you don't have to do any trimming to get this installed, there is still something that has to be modified. Uh, now normally there'd just be those four screws and then this fifth one, but uh, this screw is uh, broken on my PSP, so it's just the four today. I'll come up, set that aside, and then normally there's some uh, brackets that have to be released, but won't have to do much today. Specifically, what we need to do is connect up Come on, here we go. There's these two open points right here. And hopefully you can see. Uh, those just need to be soldered together. Why is my phone? There we go. I have the uh, the image that's literally listed on the on the uh, listing for the ribbon cable. Um, but it just shows the same thing there. You got to connect up those two points. So let's get that done and let's try it out. Flux. And I think that's it. That is indeed it. I'm going to grab a cotton swab, which this one does not look clean, so I'm not going to use that one. Oh, there we go. I found one. I have like half cotton swabs all over my desk because of stuff like this. I keep grabbing one and I'll set it down. Now, this is no clean flux, so in theory, I don't have to clean, but I'm going to do it anyway, just in case. I'm also going to take a second to wipe up the. Uh, contacts on this uh, joystick because it wasn't working too well last time. That should be it. I did also forget, and I suppose I'm not really forgetting now because I'm talking about it, there is a little square adhesive pad that comes with the ribbon that I'm assuming you're supposed to put between the screen and the PCB, but I'm not doing that. I don't see the point. Gonna drive these four screws back. And yeah, I apologize that the cooler's on. That's what that tremendously loud background noise is. Um, I didn't really want to wait for night to make this video, and I usually do, so I can turn off the cooler, but here we are. Right, let's, let's try it out. Supposedly that's going to fix my image offset issue. 
this Jesus thing ever boots. Or I have damaged it. And indeed, I think that's what happened because now I have no display, but you can hear. <sighs> Wonderful. Okay. Pull it back apart and see what went wrong. There could just be a massive short on that LCD connector between all the flux and the IPA that I just drowned it in. Yeah, given how wet that is, I'm going to assume that's the problem. I'm going to go hit this with some compressed air. Alternatively, I may have jumped the wrong point. I noticed on the image, let me pull that back up here. See, on this, there's only that 1.2 jump. Uh, on mine, we have this point right here, which I jumped. Oops, framing and then this point right here, which is probably the one I was supposed to jump. So let's try it out one more time, and if this doesn't work, then we'll try jumping the other point, and hopefully I didn't just completely ruin this. bother with the screws. And I think we've got the same thing. So yeah, that might have just been the wrong point to jump. Why do I not have any conductive membranes on my desk? That won't work. Yep, same thing. Okay. That's what to thoughts. All right, so I'm guessing there's some sort of shenanigans going on between different PSP revisions. So let's undo that. Should be a lot easier to get at that one on the outside anyway, seeing as how it's on the outside.
Come in. This would be a lot easier if I flipped it around, but I don't think I'm going to do that. How is it you can accidentally put a ball of solder on just about anything, but when you're trying to do it on purpose, it's just not working. Try something different. Because I just, for whatever reason, cannot get that connected. I have. Those are probably way too big. Yep. Oh, shoot. I don't have any. I thought I had um, oh, 402 sized fuses. I'll probably do somewhere. I don't know. I'm going to keep playing with this. I'll be back. Alright. So I just wasn't having any luck at all trying to bridge that. Uh, so I took a wee bit of enameled wire and um, just bridged it with that. It's not pretty. And it's super hard to see. Maybe it's easier to see from that angle. You can see it's sticking up, but good enough. So let's try it out. Hey, there we go. My screen is still offset though. So, I don't know what that's about. We're going to try uh, my other PSP. give a fuck about this sticker. Just go right through it. Release! Give me your secrets! There we go. Gross. Yeah. 
side. Jam that in. Release the other side. That's not coming. Now it's coming. So someone had mentioned that Japanese models came with sharp LCDs and US models didn't, but um, well, there's that. Set that aside, so we're so safe. And let's take a look at what we got here. So this is yet another different revision PSP. And I'm not sure, because again, we have two points to short out. And actually, I think this looks more like the image. compared to the last one I did. So let's try this one. Let's see if this works. I'm just gonna pull the whole screen out. Okay, and before even modifying it, let's see how it looks. So this one is shifted up as well. Okay. Yeah, you can see up at the top there. Apparently, I don't have to set the time again. That's interesting. I definitely had the battery out of this. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's try shorting. Yeah. All the way over at the end. I didn't even need extra solder. Nope, I'm not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. It's not a pretty joint, but it'll work. Apparently I have to hold this battery in. Hey, that looks better. So yeah, that's interesting. Okay, cool. Let me get this reassembled and let's get the other one reassembled. I'll be right back. 
All right, got the two reassembled here. So this is the Japanese one. I put not the original screen back in it, but an original screen. It's all the way in there. And then here is my US model one that I just put the IPS screen in. Get this battery cover on, there we go. Alright, so this one's at minimum brightness, this one's at maximum brightness, and you can tell this one's quite a bit brighter. This is the IPS model. Let's try... Oops. Come on. There we go. And so yeah, I'm seeing the exact same thing that I was seeing yesterday. The only difference is I'm seeing more of the screen. So far, at least. Get these booted up. I suppose it's a good thing I swapped these because I. I, I did say I really don't think the upgrade is worth it, and I still I still think that. I still agree that the upgrade's not worth it, but I already have it. I might as well use it. So I suppose it's, it's good that the console I'm going to want to use has the uh, working joystick. I'm not sure if this thing needs a new joystick or what. But, oh, let's take another look at that. If you look at this guy's legs, you can see how really terrible the ghosting is. And I forgot to mention this yesterday, but look at how much better it is on the IPS one. I genuinely thought that was just a feature of the game. But... There you go. So if that ghosting drives you crazy. Otherwise, beyond the ghosting, I'm still I'm still really happy with the uh, performance of the original screen. Oops. Turning on the wrong console. But yeah, there you go. Nice, failed it on both of them. All right, so yeah, there we go. I think that uh, gives this screen a much fairer shake. Um, I still really don't think it's worth it. If you're really, really into PSP, you know, uh, if you have a 1K and your screen is busted, sure, go for it. Because even though the screen itself is $2 and 70 something cents and the adapter is like $4 or $5 or something, you know, all in all, it's eight bucks. You still got to factor in shipping to the warehouse, your agent's warehouse, and then shipping from... Hey, some dude's beating me up. And then shipping from your agent's warehouse to you, so the end cost is going to be about 30 bucks. Um, so, is it worth just going out and upgrading your PSP? Fuck no. Uh, is your PSP broken and you really want to fix it? 
yeah, why not? Go for it. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I st I'm still going to come to the same conclusion that I came to yesterday. And if you, oops, if you really want the most visual fidelity out of your console, just get a PS Vita, man. The, uh, the screens in PS Vitas are so much better. The controls in PS Vitas are so much better. Everything about the Vita is better. Um, the screens are even higher resolution. Oops, doodle. And uh, the bridge is closed. Yeah, the screens in the PS Vita are even higher resolution. So even though even if you're playing PSP, so even if you're playing PSP games, uh, they are going to run at lower resolution. But for games like Liberty City Stories, especially, there are hacks to uh, run the game at native resolution on the PS Vita, and they look so much better. Uh, so, that being said, why is this off? There we go. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's a night and day difference between the two, but I still don't think it's worth it, unless, basically, you have no other choice. Um, so, hopefully, this answers some questions you guys had. Um, one more thing I do want to address. Yes, I have Infinity on this PSP. Infinity works on all models. This memory card is out of my 3K. So that's why it has Infinity on it. My other memory cards have different custom firmwares. It's just how it worked out. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments. Um, but otherwise, have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching. One quick addendum. I'm not even going to go ahead and I'm not even going to bother putting this in the tripod here. But I did run PSP Ident on both hardware versions, um, so they're both running the same software. Uh, but as you can see, my Japanese version is a FAT 4.0, whereas my U.S. version is a FAT 1.0. So that that might make a difference when it comes down to compatibility with this IPS screen. Uh, this is TA086, whereas my other one is TA079V1. So I'm thinking the, uh, the older motherboards tend to work better for this mod, at least... That's been my experience because I couldn't find the solder points on this thing to get it working. Um, with some more playing around, I'm sure I could figure it out, but here we are. Anyway, I'm done now, I swear. Thanks for watching.